if you were to take the entire English-speaking Caribbean mm. and you were to combine their buying power or what we would call the you know, GRP or the gross regional product of the English-speaking Caribbean, the 12 most powerful black people in the world have a buying power that's larger than the entire English-speaking Caribbean as it relates to their uh, you know, gross regional product. Um, so we're talking about real power here. How do we amass this? How do we create partnership and alliance? And then begin to look at how some of this power can be leveraged to impact upon some of the very critical causes that we're dealing with so that we're not, or a new group, are not coming together 25 years from now talking about the same issues and dealing with the same challenges that we are, we're having now. Uh, Dan Cote, who is the richest uh, black man in the world, um, and here's why this is important. I've been looking at billionaires in the reports that we do at the Christian Times for a number of years, and I saw uh, Bill Gates went from $22 billion, and in three to four years, he was at uh, $68 billion. So the likelihood of these wealthy blacks being maybe the wealthiest person in the world in another five, six years, very real, because it is money that makes money. And when you have uh, the, 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 the capacity and the wherewithal uh, you can flip that money in very few years, particularly if these individuals have access to the broader market that black people in America and around the world represent. So Dan Cote uh, is twice as rich as the entire GDP of Haiti. I need us to really understand the impact. There's one black man that has more money, twice as much money, as the entire GDP of the nation of Haiti. Which has 8 to 10 million people. Right? Which has 8 to 10 million people. So, 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 so figure that, um, if you will, in fact, Dan Cody could literally buy the state of Vermont. Um, uh, and and, and if, if they refuse to sell him, he could turn around and say, let me try Wyoming, because he could buy that state too. Um, all right, so, so, so in, in our conversation and dialogue, we kind of look at some key points which I've actually laid out before us. So I, I think if, if we could just quickly go through the seven possible approaches that we could take, um, identifying and working with these 12, it is not impossible. In, 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 I, I've not attempted or made any effort myself to meet um, billionaires, but I met one. And, and, and um, uh, I, I met Michael Leachin many years ago, sat in his office in Canada, um, largely because of an initiative that um, uh, I was appointed by the Governor General of Jamaica back then to, to lead in the United States. And, and uh, we serve on, on that board together. Uh, and and uh, when you get to meet a lot of these people, they're really people that you can work with. We can make things happen with. So the, big, the, the, the biggest challenge would be to get that choice meeting with some of these individuals. So let's kind of go through this. Number one is it's possible to send a letter of solicitation. Um, and, and I'm going to move through this very quickly. So you're going to have to get to the details on your own. Number two is to seek to schedule meetings with, with black billionaires. Um, and I've identified some subject areas that uh, we could approach in this particular meeting, how they expand their operation in places like the United States and, and the global black consumer market, which is real. Almost every business people are looking for new opportunities. Um, and, and, and so, this become avenues because the sad reality is that most wealthy whites, most wealthy Americans make their money
to some extent on the backs of people like us. Um, very few of these black billionaires have actually had access to the black consumer market, whether in America or other parts of the world, outside of their indigenous lands and of other regions where they may do business. Um, so I think that would obviously be a big win for everybody. Um, and that gives us great access because business people want to do more business and, and expand their reach. The second is, is, is working with major black owned businesses and enterprises and industries um, on industry control and collective leveraging. And again, simply, um, we are probably the only race of people in America and probably the world that really don't have any kind of real industry control. You know, what industry do we control? What industry do we have significant um, leverage and influence in and around? So again, here goes an opportunity to talk about how can we work with you with the economic capacity to begin to create some level of industry control. Um, and that would give black people in America and the globe tremendous leverage and capacity when we've got some level of industry control. Um, this, the third would be uh, development and or strengthening of um, uh, national and global organizations. And again, this speaks to another area for which we are extremely weak. And I believe many of the problems that we're speaking to whether it's Dr. Newkirk or, or some of the others that were talked about, we don't have, black people in America and around the world do not have any control of any significant NGOs or not-for-profits through which we can have leverage. That's right. And as much as we see Red Cross and these other institutions as not-for-profit, they sway significant power and leverage in um, whether we're talking about with governments or with major corporations. So just imagine if we're working with some of these uh, larger billionaires to create something that is, is impactful. I, I literally cried around what happened with, with, with you know, the post-hurricane um, earthquake in, in Haiti. Because at the end of the day, I had all these, I had one preacher who <coughs> called me who said, Reverend Dillon, we raised 20 thousand dollars that we want to give how should we do it you know who should we give it to and and so we don't have that level of control so we're not in a good place when we can't even point to one significant organization that black people and african people control so that we can deal with our own crises whenever they come up so i think talking to these billionaires and wealthy black people around creating something or building on something that has already been created i think becomes an important piece number d or four is how do we deepen black african control in key industries um, such as media, um, uh, again, we don't have a, a global voice again. We don't have a major global voice. We don't have a black CNN. We don't have a USA Today. Um, uh, so how do we create this? And again, business people will respond to this because it empowers them if they have a national or a global vehicle through which to communicate. The other would obviously be, be finance and banking. Again, another weak area for black people. You know, when we can look at a bank like uh, HSBC, um, the acronym which means the Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation, a lot of us don't know, um, a, an institution out of, um, of, of Hong Kong um, that is run and, and, and led by by English uh, people and, and connected to England and all of these other global banking institutions and again we don't have a significant global financial institution but again some of these billionaires have them in, in, in Africa and other places. How do we work with them to expand that base when black people in America alone are depositing well over 1.2 trillion dollars in banks? Um, uh, e, identify 
and, and sponsoring select initiatives and programs that are important pet peeve uh, for these billionaires and their organizations. So that's another very direct way that we can connect um, uh, understanding some of the uh, primary uh, issues that, that affect the continent and its global population and work to put in place the necessary agenda to address some of these very pressing <coughs> issues. I think that would be impactful as well. Then number three is um, working to organize a global summit among wealthy and key business tycoons to address key and pressing issues. I think this is one of the ways, again, that we could probably begin to connect. Many of the things that we're talking about need a broader forum. Uh, if we're sitting with global uh, political leaders within the diaspora and global financial power brokers and powerhouse around the diaspora, how much more can we walk away with when we leave that table? Um, so I, I think that is the kind of direction, and I just identify some key issues like political stability, health and, and epidemics, um, global black economics, and global black philanthropy are some of the four areas I identified there that could be a part of that the, the, the summit. Then number four, building a movement of association uh, with these billionaires, so we're connecting with them through event sponsorship such as uh, the State of the Black World Conference, and I want to, you know, and as we talk through this, uh, put on the table, maybe, here goes the first opportunity. We've got the State of the Black World <coughs> Conference coming up. What we've done at the Christian Times, as small as we are, uh, that helped us to create relationship with corporate presidents and leaders is to bring them to the table of our events, get them to be speakers, get them to be sponsors, so now we create a relationship and an alliance. So can we identify from this billionaire group a couple of individuals that we're going to aggressively reach out to, say we like what you're doing over there in Ethiopia, what you're doing in Nigeria. Can you come and share some of that information at the State of the Black World Conference? Uh, by getting them to come, we now begin to create a relationship and obviously look at how that relationship expands from there. Uh, five is utilizing, leveraging an association uh, with various government leaders and heads of states in the Caribbean, in America, in Africa to engage in their relationships and business collaboration between governments and all these billionaires. And one of the things that I find is that lots of governments, whether they're Caribbean governments and, and, or African governments, just don't know how to identify and connect with black power brokers who are on their own doing things and making progress. Uh, one of the rising new, now new billionaire um, in, in America happens to be the company that operates a conglomerate that is called the Bola Group. And the Bola Group, if you look at most of your mobile station in this marketplace, you will see a Bola market. The fact of the matter is Indians operate that, that operation. An Indian group owns that entire entity. They pretty much control the regional franchise for mobile. So not only do they own the convenience store, but they own the oil trucks, the oil tanks, <laughs> and they supply all of the oils that feed most of your mobile station in this region. Years ago, they are able to grow to that level because of an alliance that they form with the Indian government. And so the Indian government pour their resources and support in making Bola this huge conglomerate that it is today. All of these African government have the capacity and the wherewithal to look at some growing successful business people and how do we fuel energy and strength there. So now look at these billionaires and form government alliance. 
and we have relationship with some of these prime ministers and presidents and now we need to begin to utilize the resource on that side of government and politics to leverage against that on the economic side and see if through that initiative we could obviously create greater impact. Uh, very quickly, um, number six is encouraging more networking and cross um, economization um, uh, between business, not-for-profits, governments. Uh, obviously that would come and encourage a kind of what I call trickle-down economics. That's not just a Ronald Reagan term and concept. And I know a lot of black people resisted it, probably because it came from um, Ronald Reagan, but it's a powerful concept. And what it simply means is the billionaires do not get locked into a space all by themselves. Some of their money ought to trickle down to other black businesses. So below the black billionaires are black millionaires. And below the black millionaires, it trickles down to even smaller businesses. You've got a lot of black uh, uh, thousandaires. Um, and uh, thus, there is a trickle-down you know, effect where the, the Dan Cotes of the world Billion dollar enterprises are now trickling down, and we're creating a broader span of black success that goes all the way down to, to the average consumer, all the way down. So, and number seven is uh, how do we create, and I think this is an important element that we around this table should look at how do we create a world event that pulls these billionaires to the table? What kind of global initiative can we pull together around an event, around something large that we can do? I sit around these tables, and I'm probably younger than some of us, and we talk about the major Pan-African conferences that we did in England and, and in Brazil and in, in other places of the world. We need one now. We need to pull a significant one now and organize all of these energies and resources around how we make that successful. Then we identify a couple of steps that we need to take to get this done. Okay, so, so here's... So, well, hold on. So, so can we just read those steps? <laughs> yes. Yeah, in the interest of time. I mean, Absolutely. So we, can, we can read the steps and, and because we are pressing against time. Mm -hmm. I have a question. The brother said Aziz, was he a part of the conversation? I think I forgot Brother Aziz. Right. That's, that's, that's my the mistake. The network journal was supposed to be a yeah. part of these deliberations. He's not here today. He was supposed to be a part of this, these deliberations. Yeah, I apologize. I will As connect well. with them. I forgot about him. Well, let's just stop because, and, and I'm going to ask you to defer on the last part of the, and we'll just insert uh, a couple of sentences or whatever about what's happening with the economic program, not with my black racks. We're up, I mean, not with my black dollars because we're up against the clock. But I do want to, to ask people, first of all, that people understand what it is that is being asked in terms of this initiative. Uh, if people have comments or questions. Now I would say that it would the language is important. So if we can find with our creative mind something other than trickle down economics that would be helpful. Maybe <laughs> socially responsible, horizontal development of something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I agree. As soon as you said that, I agree. 